After 20 years, 25,000 customers, and over half a million emails, I know one or two things about Gmail. I'm gonna share with you five things you may not know that are gonna help boost your productivity. Gmail's been around for a long time and most of us are just kind of blindly letting the emails fester off in a corner with complete overwhelm. But I'm gonna show you a few little tricks here to help you get a little bit more out of the platform. Now let's dive straight in without any fluff so you can get productive as soon as possible. Number one, scheduled send. And I love this feature, particularly in a corporate environment. If you're someone who is burning the midnight oil and you wanna wait till the next day before you send your client an email, you can use scheduled send so it goes out at an appropriate time the next day. Next time you're sending an email, click the arrow icon and you can choose to send your email at a different time. Now, this might be useful if perhaps you're sending an email to a colleague or you wanna send an email to a contractor and you wanna remind them about something at a point in the future. This is a great way to have that email sitting there in the app box ready to go. Now, anytime you schedule an email, it's gonna sit in your scheduled box so you won't have any of them disappear if you need to go back and cancel or change the email that you've got queued up to send in the future. Next up is advanced filters. Now, Google lets you set up rules inside your mail. They're called filters inside of Gmail, but effectively what they're doing is creating an automated action when an email hits your inbox. Now, they act a little bit like what you would have in Apple Mail or an Outlook Mail, and most people, when they sign up to Gmail, don't actually access these. However, they are very powerful. Now, it's true that Google does do a pretty good job at automatically sorting your email for you into different categories. But one of the filters I always set up every time I set someone up on a brand new mailbox is the unsubscribe filter. And what we do with that is we search for any emails with the word unsubscribe and automatically put them in a filtered folder, which removes probably about 90% of the spam email from your inbox with a link to unsubscribe down the bottom just by setting up this simple rule. Now filters are also useful if you've got a second email address and you're making use of the email importing feature to put your emails into a certain folder or maybe you wanna just flag them with a tag so you know that this email has gone to a particular mailbox. Now while we're sorting our email, let's talk about finding them. We all know that Google are the kings of search and they built in a pretty phenomenal search algorithm into the Google ecosystem. Now I can search for an email way back in 2011 and it's immediately gonna open it up in my mailbox, even though I've literally got over 500,000 emails in there. And that's over a decade of never deleting a single email. Now, search stacking is a great little trick where you first start typing someone's name and it brings up their contact. But after you've hit return on their contact, you can then add a keyword as well. And what that will do is it will drill down emails to only those that include that contact, but also have the keyword as well. And you can search stack with multiple terms. You could search stack with a date as well if you wanted to, or you can search stack with multiple keywords to further bring down your results. One of the best features of learning how to search correctly in Gmail is that you spend less time needing to file things into folders in your labels to keep email safe for later, when you know you can always find them via some smart searching. Tip number four is to start using keyboard shortcuts. Now this one you have to switch on in your settings, but once you've enabled shortcuts, you can get a lot more done inside of your Gmail. Now a little bit of trivia for you, you can actually navigate all of Gmail without a mouse. And it was designed by computer programmers who wanted to be able to use email without having to click around the screen to get their work done. Everything you find can be done without a mouse, but that's probably too many shortcuts for you to learn off the top of your head. Here's some basic ones to memorize quickly. And if you want to write them down on a sticky note and stick them on your computer, that's probably a good idea. C is for compose. E is for archive. You can remember that by thinking of e-waste. R, when you're on an email, replies. F, forwards. And after you've finished writing your email, command enter or control enter will send. If you want to put something into a folder or a label, you can hit the V button and that helps you move it to the right place. Remember that, that V keeps your inbox very tidy. Now, from time to time, you may not have an internet connection, whether you're on a flight or somewhere where you're working in a cafe and you don't want to have to tether to your phone. Gmail has an offline feature, which actually lets you access the last 30 to 90 days of your email completely offline. Now, this is fantastic for those who are on the go and want to catch up with their emails right on their laptop, even when you're not connected. Make sure you switch this on inside your administrator panel for your Google account first, and then you can switch it on inside the Gmail settings. Remember to synchronize your mail before you go offline the first time. Finally, Google lets you add multiple signatures into your email mailbox. So if you're using multiple email addresses and importing multiple mailboxes into one account, or you represent multiple brands, this is a great way of keeping your signature respective to where you're sending from. If you've got multiple email aliases set up inside your company, well, this might be a great way of making sure you're sending from the correct email address 
every time you go to compose an email. Let me know what you thought of these tips. Drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius, or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.